This is crazy, man. Liberal white woman. We are absolutely the most dangerous women out there. Deconstructing Karen has to be one of the strangest things a show that I have ever seen in my entire life. I don't see color. I don't see. So how she said, I'm, I'm blinded to color. Like, it doesn't phase me at all. Y'all, when we bleed, we bleed red. I'm just going to drop the bomb here. That's white supremacy. Oh, that's nonsense. Okay, friends, welcome back to Look and Live. You here with Pastor James Devalon, and this is The Perspective. I did a video just yesterday talking about this show called Deconstructing Karen. Uh, let me share my screen with you here. Having looked into the show, I realized there were some very, 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 very strange ideology and perception uh, where these women are addressing black, brown, and some were white, addressing other white women, helping them to realize that they are racist. Yes, I said it. So now, friends, we're going to let you take a listen to part two. I thought part one was hard to get through the first video that I did. I was like, this is crazy nonsense. I can't believe what I'm listening to. And then I heard the conversation continued. And I went and looked into what's happening on YouTube with the rest of the show. This is a five minutes video. Let me tell you something. I thought part one was bad. Oh, this is worse. Friends, uh, let me get my headset here because... Uh, if you think you have heard some stuff, you haven't heard anything yet. And I'm here to say, if you're a white woman, you might be offended by some of the stuff you're about to hear here. But uh, nevertheless, we got to have this discussion because this racist stuff has gone wild. So let's take a listen. You know what I expect of white women? Not a damn thing. Nothing. I expect nothing of you because you have never given me anything. Listen to that. You, you, you hear that? Look at those sentiments behind those words. Why will any white woman should be sitting down listening to this nonsense? I'm protesting already. It's only been 10 seconds in. Let's keep going. I can't trust you, okay? I am a liberal white woman. We are absolutely the most dangerous women out there. What kind of nonsense is this? Where did these, uh, well, liberal white women, that kind of makes a lot of sense. So where did she get this nonsense? Who done told her she is the most dangerous person out there just because of the color of her skin? Who has made her to feel this way? This is crazy, man. Liberal white woman. We are absolutely the most dangerous women out there. We are the most dangerous women that exist because we want to think that we are better. White women have abused. Oh, Lord have mercy. So why are you using your personal life as a mean or as an example for all other white women? Maybe you are the most dangerous white women out there, but don't speak for all white women. They can't speak for themselves. Or you have to help them to realize how dangerous and racist they are. So that's your job. Okay. Used us our whole lives. Why do we have to hold your hand? Can't we just tell you, hey, you guys have hurt us. This is what you've done. Now make it right. I have this discussion. So which of these white women that are present in the room right now or living in the world right now has really done you harm which one of them and in what ways have they hurt you with people that i know friends lawyers everybody and they'll say well regina you know there are some good white people and i'll go well what have the good white people been doing for the last 450 years they've been minding their own business they don't have to get into this social justice warrior mentality and they don't have to be your savior. They don't have to fight your battles. They can simply stand and, le and live life. They can simply mind their own business and take care of their own families. Why do they have to get on this bandwagon along with you and play that little game that you guys are playing? 
They got their own lives to live. They got their own children to raise. They got their own husband to love. Why do they have to get into this nonsense? They don't have to. Leave them alone. I'm a black man. And I'm not getting into this nonsense. What have you been doing? Obviously, it's not enough because nothing has changed. So I want a show of hands of everyone. She said nothing has changed. These people are delusional. What do you mean nothing has changed? In America, nothing has changed in regard to racism and the blame falls on white women? How is nothing has changed? All these so-called lives that were lost, all these so-called protests, all these Black Lives Matter movement <clears throat> with all this so-called evil stuff that was attached to it. But despite of all that, you telling me a black person, a black woman living in America today is complaining that nothing has changed. When you have a show where you can sit and dictate to other white women and nothing has changed. There are more blacks entrepreneurs, rich, in America than in other country in the world. Nothing has changed. Most of our football players that are rich, millionaires, are blacks, and basketball players in the United States of America, and nothing has changed. We have black pastors who are overseeing white congregation. We have mixtures of all that all over the place. We, we have black mayors and black doctors, black president. I mean, nothing has changed. These people are out of their minds. At this table, who is racist? Look at this game they're playing. You see, the, the, look at the game they're playing. So some of these women lift their hands. I guess they're not done talking to them yet. So this this show is very obvious. It has an agenda. And I had to I have to criticize it because it's it's online. And that's what we do. I still believe in freedom of speech and you can criticize me for criticizing your show. Now look at this, right? Deconstructing caring. This is their website. It says the crystal is polished. The china is pristine. Okay. The candles are lit and a nice white lady guests are about to be served some cold, hard truth. Listen to these statements, right? So Regina Jackson and Sarah Rowe have lunch, a race to diner, a movement to inspire white women to confront themselves and acknowledge and to acknowledge their own racism and complicity in white supremacy. Lord have mercy. The dinners will remind you that your favorite childhood memories of playing the game Clue. Mm -hmm. The most dangerous person in the room is never the obvious suspect. What if the Bible trumping conservative Trump voter isn't any more racist than the liberal yoga teacher who screamed, love is love? Well, if well-intentioned, Liberal white women actively played a role in upholding racism and white supremacy. If this provocative documentary white women experience radical honesty about racism, their daily role in upholding it, their conditioning to ignore it, and the essential part they can play in tearing down their, their, the systems that are killing black and brown people every day. These people are serious. Could you imagine a show was put together to address black racists like these women? Oh, there will be there will be an out war. There will be an outrage of the culture as if they don't exist. Well, they do. You're looking at them. So I saw a couple people surprised that I raised my hand when I said that I was racist. I am racist against black people. Mm. So it's it's institutional. Indians are institutionally racist against black people. I don't see color. I don't see. So how she said, I'm I'm blinded to color. Like Indian or institutionally racist against black people? That's the most strangest things I've ever heard. It huh. doesn't phase me at all. Y'all, when we bleed, we bleed red. I don't see color. Go ahead, girl. Speak your mind. 
people. I don't see color, I don't see, so how she said, I'm, I'm blinded to color. Like, it doesn't phase me at all. Y'all, when we bleed, we bleed red. I'm just gonna drop the bomb here, that's white supremacy. Oh, that's nonsense. The girl just said she doesn't see color because we all bleed red. At the end of the day, we're all people. We have one father, one creator. Instead of acknowledging the fact what she said is fact, you call her white supremacist. <laughs> you know, these people are so desperate to uphold racism. Racism is on life support. It's dying. It's dying so fast in America, and I'm so glad that it is. And thank God for it. It's dying. So fast is the death of racism in America that these people have to put a show together to revive it. You know? It's like they're trying to, they're trying to do CPR for racism here. <laughs> because, because really, if you have to put a show together to help white women realize that they are racist, it's a sign that racism is not a real big deal as it really was. Because if you have to help them understand that they are racist, that means they really are not racist. But again, this is what we get as TV shows today. By the way, this is a Canadian show. And I'm pretty sure there's, there's a lot of thumb, thumbs down on, this, on these videos. Color and let me make sure I, I give it my thumb down myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. Blindness is white supremacy. Do not teach your kids to be colorblind. Do not talk about colorblindness. Don't say that that I don't. Do not teach your kids to be colorblind. What kind of nonsense is that? We don't teach that at home. We teach our children to love and respect people. We teach them to look at character, not skin color. Because skin color, at the end of the day, don't really matter. Is the way people behave that should matter. This is the, the exact opposite of what they're trying to achieve. Martin Luther King says we should be judged by the content of our character instead of the color of our skin. These women are doing the exact opposite of that. I don't see the color of your skin and we cut ourselves open. It's bleeding red. If you're going to cry, leave the table and go into the living room there. That's right there. When a white... What is so disrespectful? So disrespectful. Look at her face, yo. Look at her face. Could you imagine these women talking to some of my, of, of our church members where I I I serve as an assistant pastor? Some of our members are white, amazing white women. It's a mixed church, of course, but a lot of them are white. We've never felt no racism. We never even smelled it. Um, could you imagine people talking to them like that? I'll grab the Bible from a, from my pulpit and, and hate you across your head. <laughs> we will not tolerate that. We will we will we will nicely escort you out of the church with this rhetoric. It will not even be welcome in our church. Woman starts crying. What happens? All the Everybody attention is the the When I was in Charleston, South Carolina last summer, so I get into white women are not allowed to cry. They call them white tears and something because they get all the extra attention. So. Yeah, so you can disrespect them, call them all types of names, cut out their speech, twisted their words. But if they cry about the way you're treating them, you say you can't cry, you need to leave the room. Do you see how demonic you sound? My lift, and the guy turned around and looked at me and he said, Lady, he goes, I hate to have to say this to you, but if, if I get pulled over, you're just another black woman, and uh, he's black. And he said, put your hands up, do as they say, do not make any trouble. He actually told First of all, I don't even believe that story. And even if that story was true, that man lied to you. He's giving you a perception of his own supposed reality or he's delusional himself. Told you that. Yeah, of course. Oh, dear God. Of course. I don't believe that's that. That's the life that he lives. And so that's I his reality. But that's insane. But that that might be his reality, but that's not the reality for all black folks. That might be where he lives and what he had experienced 
And for him to even say that to her, if that story is even true, is also inconsistent with the data. Because that's not really what's happening in the inner cities and everything. The real people that are getting shot down or killed by cops are those who are really acting up. Now, there may be a few who might have been mistreated. I, I'm not denying it. But it's not just because they're black, though. Some cops, I think they're just horrible cops. And they don't do it just because of skin color, specifically. They treat white civilians the same way too some white people being beaten up by cops hated mistreated and shut down for a reason too that's his reality anger she's worried that her kids are gonna I, die so what is it? i cannot remember a time that i have not woken up in the Serious. middle of the night in a cold sweat i want to ask also to stop acting shocked so part of white feminism is is acting so surprised when we tell oh, this is a clown show this is a clown show. I mean, how do you guys feel? How many of you that are watching all is a white woman? And I don't like to categorize you by your color of your skin because your character is what matters to me. And the fact you listen to this channel and you listen to me is proof to me that you're not racist. It's because you care more about content that matters to you than the color of people's skin. But I'm still asking, how does this nonsense make you feel? Please comment below. You? But it is, not why acting. are you telling us not to act the way that we act if it is surprising? Because to me, that is surprising. White, that upholds white supremacy. Why are you? Look at the content. Now, you can't talk. You can't disagree with me. You can't have your own opinion, and you cannot react to my speech. It gets even more diabolical. Feeling so hurt. But why are your feelings? Oh, you can't feel hurt now. <laughs> These women... <laughs> The thing is, I think this is very well thought of. They found a number of women where they can have them talk down to the women that they can press down upon. Women who might not know how to defend themselves because they're not ready for the argument nor the fight. So these are the women that are invited in the show. Why didn't they invite some real solid Bible fearing, uh, serious, solid conservative white women who can stand their ground some real women who are not afraid of calling things for what they are some real women who knows how to to deal with the argument and help to the the dethrone their talking points we haven't heard of these white women how come we don't bring them to this show and let them speak you know instead of bringing women who are afraid of speaking out and they are ostracized in the show they can't speak for themselves they are made to feel stupid they can't have a voice an opinion they can't feel they can disagree they can share their view they can say nothing so what's the purpose of this show no the purpose is not to help white women in any way at all the purpose is to create racism in the heart of these white women that's why this is happening feelings more important than the reality of the violence of our lives. You walk through the world with a different experience because you are a white woman. That is garbage. That is political junk. Don't come here with this nonsense. You live in America as a black woman. For you to sit there in front of a bunch of white women, giving them that speech, giving them that rhetoric, and they kindly sit there and listen to you talk is fact that these women are not racist because they could just get up and walk out. They don't have to listen to this nonsense. But the fact they sat down and listened to you talking all that rhetoric, racist garbage is fact to me that you are not in any less privileged than they are. It's fact to me that America is not racist as you want it to be. I, I, I want to go. <laughs> so I can't sit here? <laughs> you got to go. Sorry, sis. I think I have a little bit of a problem with the we versus I. I think that there is the big perpetual we, right? There we go, girl. Speak up. Speak up. We white women, for sure. But I think there's also we African Americans and the we were slaves, right? And we, these things happen to us. That doesn't happen to everybody, right? I mean, and, and Amen. Amen. This is the point where she needs to hold on to this talking point. She has a strong point here. Don't let it down. Stop saying we. 
Stop putting all these black women in the box. Stop putting all these white women in the box. Stop categorizing all these black people as if they are victim. I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. Special, I'm a Christian. Jesus sets me free. I'm not in bondage to any system. Now, there are things in the world that certainly doesn't always work in my best interest, doesn't always assist me, and I have to figure out a way to work around that. That doesn't mean I'm a victim. I just need to get over these obstacles. Now, here is the thing. This lady is speaking her mind and she has a very strong argument. And I really hope she stays on this point. And you, I, I let's back it up a these little things bit. happen to us. That doesn't happen to everybody. Right. I mean, and, and you, I, I understand. And I, I am, I am here. It happened to all African-Americans. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Look at the attitude of this lady. Look at the eye contact. You see, this is the thing you have to confront. You see this, these, these, these eyes that are staring at you and the frown. You see that stuff? Don't let that phase you because oftentimes do not let a man frown a, a person's eyes to get you to change your perspective. They are just trying to control your speech. It doesn't matter how serious she's looking right now. That lady was making a serious point. And what she's trying to do is using her body language to get her to, to deter or to step back or to change her perspective. It's a very demonic way of dealing with facts. These things happen to us. That doesn't happen to everybody, right? I mean, and, and you, I, I understand. And I, I, am, I am here. It happened to all African-Americans. No, it does not, woman. It has not happened to me, nor any of my children, not even my mother, nor grand mothers and fathers don't even come with this nonsense it has not happened to many blacks we have not been uh chained up we have not been in slavery we have not experienced jim crow segregation we have not all been there you are making a reflection of a particular situation that has happened in the past you are hooking up to a very dark part of our history using that as a talking point of a springboard to spew out your anger against these individuals that's what you are doing you are not helping anything you are hurting if anything yeah it didn't happen to you it listen, did not. listen, one of the things that we know, one of the Absolutely. things, let me just I, say, I have a lot of they're making her feel stupid as if what she said wasn't true. It did not happen to you. Yes, it happened to your ancestors. And I'm sorry that it did. It should not have been. And we can learn from that past. But to sit there at this table, making these women feel so dumb and stupid and make them feel racist when they truly are not. Guess who's the real racist in the room? Native American Science. history, and I don't take Science. advantage of any of that. I Time out. Are you saying that black people, African Americans, descendants of slaves, are taking advantage of that? You yes, they are. That's exactly what she's saying, and she's right about that. What kind of question you even ask? Why are you asking the question? She just said exactly that. You are using the incense, the, your ancestors' suffering, and what has happened in slave, in slave during slavery times. You are using that as a springboard to spew out your anger and project your own racist ideology on these white women. That's what you're doing. Well, you want to acknowledge that. It's not because you have experienced racism as it really is. Have you really been experiencing racism? Have you really, in America, as a black person, really been mistreated because of the color of your skin? Let's be really honest. I know there may be time where you might have experienced one stage of that or another, and this doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't exist at all, but let's be real here. Who are the real racists in the room again, I'm asking? You just said- That's you have, not what I'm saying. You, at these dinners, we see white women behaving badly. And that bad behavior looks like denial of white supremacy, denial of racism, and- They're not denying the fact it has happened. We're not denying the fact, and I'm siding with these white women here, man, I'm not sure if, you, if you're getting this. They're not denying that it did happen. They're not denying the fact that racism does exist. What they're denying is you making them feel guilty for it. What they're denying is you making them feel that they are racist when they are not. That's what they're denying. And guess what? I agree with them. Even denial of slavery, this is nothing new. Why is it that being called a racist makes you so upset? 
it doesn't make me well it is upsetting well anyway let them talk upset anymore i believe that every white person is racist because of the system oh gosh lady you done drink that kool-aid and i had to learn about the system to get that do i love you you need to stop with the systematic racism it doesn't exist in america there are some business we could say where people choose to be racist that the business owner in itself but the idea of systematic racism in america today you're crazy less because you're a different color absolutely oh speak of your mind about the system to get that do i love you less because you're a different color absolutely not but do you realize that everything you're saying is taking away everything they just said that is so look how they play this game everything these women bring up these white women say that is positive that doesn't affirm and confirm their point any point of disagreement they tear it down because the goal is for you to comply. The goal is for you to accept whatever rhetoric is coming from these black, white, or black, white, or brown who are pushing this racist ideology. They want to make sure Karen is deconstructed by their own narrative. And you better not bring another perspective to the table or else you're racist. That's what's going on here. I get it. Such I, I'm you just said it's such bullshit, frankly. It but it is. It is. But it, it is. is. You literally erased everything yes. this woman just said. Like everything. You know how not, racist this country not is. Not to the degree that you do. Oh no, you frankly. will never know. You keep coming back with this, frankly, BS about love being love and love trumps. Like, what do you mean by that? What I mean is that beyond the anger and the problems that we are feeling, that there is something more to our, our beingness. And it isn't the flesh. It isn't. Does love, does love um, save That's the Mexicans true. who are in ICE facilities? Does love save Trayvon Martin? Does love save Sandra Bland? Love is love. <laughs> love is fucking love. Serious. Lady. I'm going to let her make that point again because she literally just did the very thing I just mentioned earlier. Again, deconstructing, right? Deconstructing, deflecting, uh, 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 tearing down and ripping them open. That's the goal. It isn't. Does love, does love um, save the Mexicans who are in ICE facilities? Does love save Trayvon Martin? Does love save Sandra Bland? Love is love. Love is fucking love. Seriously. So who in this... That is crazy. This is crazy. This room, raise your hand if you're a racist. Mission, <laughs> mission accomplished. Yay, you did it. You did it after all. Raise your hand if you're a racist. Dang! <laughs> Woo! We did it. You see? You see? There you go. I told you. We did it because the goal was not to have a conversation about racism. The goal was to find a reason to be racist. The goal was not to help these black uh, white women to stop being racist. The goal was to make sure they become racist. Because this racist th stuff that many... Social, social justice warriors are promulgating is on a life, lifeline. It's dying. It's losing his power. So the more racism is being eradicated, there are some systems that cannot do without it. So we have to recreate, revive, resurrect racism by any means necessary if we can pen policemen as being racist mission accomplished if we can pen the president of the united states as being racist amen if we can aim at these white women and make them feel like karen's and i still have my perspective about karen i think she was badly mistreated and misunderstood nevertheless I am not saying what she said was right or what she did was right, but Karen became a way to describe these white women who supposedly uh, 
calling the police on black people for just whatever the reason they feel like it. But however, making people feel racist, think racist, sound racist is the goal of the show. But guess what this show is doing in opposition? Promoting racism. So the very thing that they appear that they are fighting against are the very thing that they themselves are constructing. Listen to the Bible. Should we be making people feel sorry, guilty, for the sin of their ancestors? I'm going to tell you how God deals with this matter. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Right? The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. This is serious. So according to the Bible, should we, does God hold me accountable for the sin of my grandfathers, my mother, the things that they have done in their past? Am I responsible for what they've done? God says, no. You are accountable for your own sins. God doesn't condemn you for what your fathers and your mothers did because you are your own person. You have your own history. You have your own decisions to make. But these women are doing the exact opposite. This is why this show is so ungodly. And I'm criticizing it, of course I am. To hold these women as if they are responsible for the condition of our world today, or the condition of black communities today, for the death of black men or black women in the streets, to make them feel this way, that was evil. That's not right, that's wrong. I can understand why they raised their hands. I'll raise my hands too, so I can get out of this conversation and leave the table, because it's nothing but garbage. But I stop right there. Like and subscribe, comment below, let me know what you think. Until next time, remember, and as always, look up to Jesus and live by faith. Have a good one. Bye.